on tonight's episode, Beth gets the shock of her life whenever a mysterious body shows up at her house. Not to mention she has a family emergency and a decision to make that could affect her entire life along with her children. Ruby makes a stand finally for herself. And Annie finds out there's more than one way to solve her child's problem. Find out how and why here on Nephilim Entertainment. What is up, people? What is up? Welcome back. I am your host, Metatron Real. Thank you for tuning in. This is Nephilim Entertainment, and we're covering Good Girls. And this is episode four, Adam Bomb. Drop the bomb. So, our girls are going about their normal lives like normal. Yeah, they're going about their lives. Uh, we have... <laughs> Let's start off by talking about the, the normal ones. First of all, we have Ruby, who is dealing with some customer service issues. Apparently, the kids that she's waiting on do not show the proper respect for their el elders slash mediocre workers, I guess you could say. Yeah, they apparently don't show cashiers very much respect. We got Annie, who's finding out our little Sadie is getting bullied by kids in school when they're deep panting her to find out what she's got underneath the clothing, which, oh, I can't stand kids bullying. And finally, we have our ringleader, Beth, who is talking to her children about parties and throwing balloons and the other kids and what they're doing, and all of a sudden she has a body in her bed, or in her kid's bed. Uh, he's covered in tats, looks like he's been shot. Yeah, I'm guessing this has something to do with our boy, Rio. So, we find out. That apparently our girl Beth has made a deal with Rio to take on more jobs. As he very much puts blatantly, they don't have a right to choose what kind of jobs they get. So right now they're babysitting their bo his boy while while <laughs> he's taking care of business. How and why? We don't know. We just know he's been shot and he needs to lay low. And the best place for him to hide is suburbia. So... Da -da. And the girls are not going to stand for this. They are going to protest until Rio starts pulling out of wads of cash. One by one. Three stacks, about yay bit big. And the only thing I can think after that is, dude, you can have them in my house. <laughs> he can chill. I got TV. I got cable. He can watch TV. It's cool. Just don't get no blood. I mean, if you get blood on the carpet, it's cool. Can always replace it, you know what I mean? I'll take some of that action. Hey. <laughs> so, yeah, our girls are now and apparently in the business of babysitting. Gang bangers and whatnot. Meanwhile, we got Boomer. Such our lovable little perv is going and talking to the FBI. So, what he spills is enough to make a mockery of himself. Go figure, right? Yeah, apparently when he talks to the... FBI detective, a Mr. Agent Turner, <laughs> he pretty much puts Boomer on blast and tells him, hey, you got shot down, get over it. And if you really think about it, 90% of it is where this all stems from. He made a shot towards Annie and Annie shot him down. So now he is out for vengeance. And it is just escalated. So, Agent Turner, you right on the money. And that's spooky as hell. I'm just going to put that out there. Does anybody else, you know, have faith by the whole idea that the possibility of him being made out to be a, a child pedophile is nowhere near across anyone's mind? Apparently, Annie doesn't remind him subtly about it, but. Yeah, it's just, it's, mm. but we go back to Ruby's little problem, and apparently with the kid and Rudy waiting on him, apparently he burned his hand on a hot plate, and because of this, Rudy is having to make a form of apology 
to warn him that it is hot and yeah apparently the family's wanting to sue ungrateful little punk ass is wanting to make Ruby's life miserable because she works in a minimum wage job and basically works for peanuts so naturally he's gonna take advantage of this whole fact that she has to do everything in her power to keep her job meanwhile dude's awake at Beth's house and he <laughs> runs out of the house at gunpoint or he takes the girl or he pretty much points a girl a gun in the girl's face takes off after stealing her car hey yeah this turned out really well so it looks like our girls are gonna get paid meanwhile they uh the talk part talk about the party comes back up this time Dean is getting involved and when he gets involved apparently he makes promises that Beth has to keep and he sinks low by reminding or letting Beth know that what their son wants for her birthday is for mom and dad to get back together. And he wants to throw that up in Beth's face. Look, dude, I understand. I understand what it's like to want a woman to stay in your life. But come on. When you evoke the kids, when you try to blackmail the kids, dude, you are just sinking to a low that is shameful. You messed around on her. I'm just going to put this out there. You a hoe. You literally made your bed. And now you have to line it. Do you blame her? Honestly, I hope. I mean this. I hope Beth does not get back with Dean. Under any circumstances. I don't care. I do not believe that if you cheat on your wife, you deserve to have your wife back in your life. That's Meta's soapbox. Just saying. For the record, Meta Soapbox states that if you cheat on your wife, you don't deserve to have a wife. Plain and simple. But anyway. So, with this going on, and he gets a nice little phone call. Apparently Sadie punches a kid. Punches a kid for depancing her in front of the whole school. She almost gets suspended for it. And Dad finds out, which, much the... And in dismay, he wants to go and talk to the principal, but apparently this is not a wise choice by any. But I have to say, Sadie, go girl, punch him in the lights. I hope to God you knocked out some teeth. I hope, he, his, <laughs> I hope his pictures in school show him missing some teeth. I mean, kid deserved it, right? But, Rudy, this is my favorite part. I never talked much about Rudy because she was just so much of a background character. But this is where our girl makes a stand. She's quote unquote sorry. Sorry that your punk ass can't figure out the plate is hot and you want to burn yourself. I'm sorry that your mama is using this shit to make everyone else feel bad about their lives when she is sad and miserable. I mean, Ruby roasts this family. I mean, roast them. <laughs> Yeah, they had third degree burns after she done lit their ass on fire with her words, a speech, and badassery, Ruby. I love it. So awesome. It was so awesome. So Rudy got knocked up a couple steps in my book. So now we have Annie who is the liberal sort of, hey, let's be a wild card kind of person. We got Beth, who is the technical sort of leader of the group. And now we got Ruby, who, for lack of a better word, is the shit talker of the group. But she puts everything out in the open and puts all the honesty and everything. And I love that. I love Ruby's character for that. I mean, this girl, she put that suburban mom ass in her place. Even though she lost her job, girl, you've earned my respect and you earned my love as your character is a fan of your character. I applaud you, madam. So, with that said, we have Boomer. He shows up at the party along <laughs> he shows up at about the same time Rio shows up. Hey, let's just all make it a nice little shindig, shall we? R Boomer shows up apparently apparently he's wanting to mend fences and make men's Everything that happened, aka he wants to spy. 
We got Rio, who's wanting to pick up his boy. I noticed to him, he ran away, and he refuses to pay our girl Beth. And I love what he said to her. We're not here to try, bitch. It was... I don't see Rio as a disrespecter of women. In fact, I think he's got a lot of respect. And I'll talk about this a little bit later on. But I think I'm starting to feel a little bit of tension between Beth and Rio. In that oh so ooh, ooh kind of way. Because the way he looks at her... It's not a bitch out of not I could knock you out right now. It's a alright mom. Is that how you want to do this? Alright. Okay. <laughs> but the most interesting part about all this is the little girl writes about there being a guy in the bed to Stan. So Stan in his natural paranoia and knowing that his wife could do so much better than him starts wondering does mommy have a new friend in which the kids don't exactly help with the whole no dad mom still loves you it's yeah people are starting to show up at our house at weird hours of the night what yeah so stan's now uber territorial starting to sniff around and lay his territory down even though he has no territory over there whatsoever to the point to where she He's starting to kick his ass to the curb. But he blurts out, I have cancer. What? Yeah, Stan apparently announces he has cancer. I'm not buying it. I'm not. I'm not buying it. Look, you evoke the kids' names to try to win Beth back. You try to guilt her. You try to play the sob story. You even use the kids. And I wouldn't put it past him for him to tell his son when he made his birthday wish about him and mom and dad getting back together. I wouldn't surprise me if he put that idea in his son's head. Now he's saying he has cancer? Dude, I don't believe you for shit. Just saying. So, oh, dude finally comes back that went missing after they've after they made their after they've uh, pretty much lined out the whole fact that Stan now has cancer. Beth, of course, takes it kind of hard, loses sleep, and he's over there to stay with her. Well, old dude shows up. And he greets the guy, finds out that he apparently was in some kind of shootout, but then offers, hey, you need a ride. Now, I didn't know where they were going with this, but then we show we see old dude show up at Sadie's school. <laughs> wait, wait. Are you sick and old dude on some kids? Normally I'd be disgusted by that notion, but I don't like bullying whatsoever. I'm strongly against it, and honest to God, I mean, God forgive me for this. But there's so many times when I hear of kids bullying other kids, I want to walk up to them, me being a grown-ass man, and punch the little kid in the face. I'm just saying. I don't. I haven't. I won't. Partially because it's immoral, and partially because it's illegal. But old dude is a criminal. And a gangster, and he's don't give no shits. So for him to walk up to these kids doesn't just make threats, doesn't just throw himself around like the alpha male. I mean, he does all that, but he takes it one step further. He breaks old kid's thumb or finger, I should say. He breaks old kid's finger to get his point across. Are you what? I mean, literally after shoving. Food in the kid's mouth, the muffle of screen, he breaks a finger and said, Don't let me catch you. You pants somebody again. And then gets on to his friend who's the one to ride him out and said, Stitches or snitches get stitches. I don't know who this dude is. I don't know who he is. But that level of I will do whatever it takes to protect old girl. Sadie, you got a hero right there. This dude. I'm liking this dude. I'm starting to like the people that Rio roll with. They're badass. They're criminals. But you can't help but like these guys. And I, I mean, you cannot help but respect these people, especially if they're willing to do what it takes to protect little kids. You have my vote, sir. You need a place to crash? Holler at me. We will hide you in the shed if we have to. Just saying. Anyway. Boomer purchased Turner with a photo of Rio. 
I foresee Rio having to shoot Boomer. And honestly, Thor would be better off with it. That's what I'm saying on the matter. And our girls are actually cutting deals with Rio. In the episode, the way they throw the party is they go to Cloud Nine, which is a department store, which has a 30 day guarantee or er, 30 day return guarantee along with as long as you have a receipt. So they can pretty much purchase all this stuff. If they don't want it, they can bring it back within 30 days. Hey, also might have throw a party. Which I figured there was going to be some big to do over that. No, everything went legit. And it inspired the girls to actually, this is how we can actually get you money out there without there being any, basically they're going to help a money launder. Go and buy stuff from the store, bring it, take it back within 30 days, pay for it with the counterfeit cash, get real money back. And I love how Beth talks about 20% cuts. Rio says, we'll try it. And Beth says, we're not here to try, bitch. Oh, dude. She said that. Oh, man. Even I was like, damn, girl. What is Oh, You divorced yet? <laughs> I can see it. And this is what I wanted to talk about earlier. I can see it on our boy Rio's face. He's got lit up so much. I think there's a little bit of a tension between Beth and Rio. I'm seeing it. Because he's not looking at her like, how dare you? He's looking at her like, all right. Is that how you want to do this? All right. I think he pushes Beth in a way. And what gets him is she pushes back. And I think he likes that about her. And I think that's sort of where their, their uh, relationship are going. I'm already here right now to state. If Rio and Beth hook up at any point, whether they kiss, have one night stand, whatever, I'm all for it. I can honestly see Beth rolling up with with Rio. She's still being the suburbia mom. I know Stan would have her fit, but who cares, right? I can see Beth with Rio, and I'm all for that. I'm voting for Beth and Rio. I'm just saying. But finally, we find out that Dina's lying about having cancer. I knew it. You rat bastard. You lying to you using your kids. Now you're lying about cancer. You are a damn snake to get what you want. Whew. And the episode ends with now Agent Turner showing up at Beth's doorstep. Great. Thanks, Boomer. Maybe you and Dean need to hang need to hang out and start a boys club. All right, up next for good girls. All right, so we have the girls are basically working the system, and they pretty much go into the full details of it in the next episode. But basically, what it entails are no one's going to pay attention to a bunch of suburbia wives coming in there buying stuff for their family. You know, TVs, washing machines, whatever. Come in, pay with cash, get get the product. Leave, come back, receipt in hand, get real money in exchange. Totally legit, right? Money, money laundering in the basic form. Nobody's going to suspect suburban wives. They get 12.5% of the cut. And if they move thousands, that's a lot of money. So, with that happening, we actually see something that I figured would happen. One of the girls ends up losing the receipt. Now we're talking about probably thousands of dollars worth of merchandise. And they lose the receipt. Which, I mean, technically it's paid for. But at the same time, they're losing Rio's money. Which is not good. And we all know that he does not take the loss of money very well. So lastly... We have Agent Turner, who actually comes up to Beth and is a little bit more vocal about, do you know this man? And it's a picture of Rio. So I'm just wondering, how much does Agent Turner know? How much is he going to push? And is he really going to be maybe probably an antagonist throughout maybe this season? 
I mean, I would hate for the girls to actually get arrested for a season, but then the breaks when you commit crimes. But it's going to be a wrap for me. Be sure to leave me a thumbs up down below. Post a comment, be more friendly, and share your thoughts on this episode. Be sure to subscribe to my page and stay tuned to the end of the video for more content. But my question for y'all are, do you support Beth and Rio? Let me know down up here and down here. But that's going to be a wrap for me. I'm Matt Hero. You're watching F1 Entertainment. Tell you day dreamers and creators out there. Keep you guys in the clouds. Proofs.